That's the one that makes you want to stay. Makes you want to run. Right, good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Okay, day six, Project Hayabusa build. This cafe is a mad silly project thing. And um, first of all, as I've said in all the other videos, we're doing with all the bearings, bushes, seals, and all the cycle parts, taking care of business first and making it safe before we make it look dark. Okay, there we are, and yet more parts arrive. Now, a set of clip-ons. I wanted some regular, ordinary, traditional style clip-ons for the bike, rather than the saddle that bolts on top of the yoke, and that is exactly them. They're adjustable in terms of length and so on, and when I get to them, I'll show you how they work. They're gonna be exactly what I want because the top yoke itself may have to change, it may not. It depends on the time comes, but that is all part of the style makeover. For the rest, we've still got parts to deal with. Uh, a chain to go with the sprocket, so that's all in ready. Chain and sprockets video. I've done a few of them, but I'll do the same on this because it's well worth doing. And with the state of this bike, something that's gonna be included on all of these videos is how to deal with stuff that's rusted and seized and stuck because it really is a challenge, this bike, and I'm loving every minute of that. The other thing we've got here is the other grip. I just, this is a genuine Suzuki Hayabusa grip or Suzuki grip. I wanted the proper ones because I love them. They're exactly what I like. I've got the tube on the other one for the twist grip, and that's just the left-hand grip side. There's one more final brake piston. I think I showed you these in a previous video. It's a brake piston and seals because I'm going to refurbish all of those front calipers and rear with new pistons rather than trying to clean up the old ones and see if that makes these Tokikos, these much maligned Tokiko calipers work perfectly. Uh, we don't know, we'll see when we get there. Now the other thing is more bearings. Now obviously the bearings is the most important thing, they're absolutely critical. I proved the point beyond all reasonable doubt in the last video that you need to replace them on spec with a 20 year old bike that's been neglected. Now this last two is, as we have here, this is swing arm bearings in that one. And on this I believe we have, I think this could just be a fork seal set for later. Lovely, look at that. Oh, look at that a couple of buffs. Here we are, good old Wimoto. Thanks, guys. A couple of buffs there. And yep, a fork seal and dust seal set for later on when we come to do the forks. So that's excellent. Okay, so that's pretty much everything in. There's not a lot more to come, but this particular video should be one of two. Now, the swing on bearings are a longer job than wheels. Taking a wheel out is pretty straightforward. In fact, it's the first job I'm going to do in a minute. But taking a swing on out is a little bit bigger of an operation. It's something that many people may never have done. Certainly if you've ever had a bike, a sports bike, and you have to take the swing arm out, there's quite a lot to it. Often you need a special tool to do it with. Today I'm gonna to make one of those because I don't have one to fit. Even though I've made one previously for the last bike, they're all different sizes, so often you have to make a range of them. And it saves you a lot of money because you probably only ever use them once. So there we are, that's it. Let's get stuck into day six. First of all, get the swing arm out and see if we've got time to do the bearings themselves. tool this was the spanner that I made with that end on for undoing the swing arm pivot on the ZX7R but with this bike it's the wrong size it doesn't fit I'll show you right there it is and it notches into these four slots there I put the bottom one in and then go to leave it up like that as you can see it's way too big it misses it by a mile but that one is too big and this is another prohibitive reason why people don't buy these special tools to undo this sort of thing because there's different sizes and how often are you going to use them i made this one i thought i could use it forever and ever it's the wrong size for the high booster so i've got to make something similar now i've got another one of these pipes that's a piece of header pipe exhaust header pipe you seen that before haven't got another piece that's a different size I've got another one of them but there's no point because it's still going to be the wrong size so what i need to do is measure that have a look in the steel stock drawer, see if I've got a piece of tubing or something that's the right size and then I can make another one that fits this bike. So that's the first task today, make a tool just to get the swing arm out. There we go. Aha, aha, a little bit of stainless. Bingo, here we are. Little piece of tubing, perfect size. Just cut the notches in that, drill a hole in the end. I'll be able to turn that off nicely.
There we go. Turn it with a bar of some kind, not a screwdriver. That's it, ready to push on. Okay, I'll do the other end first. Put it down on the floor for this thing. Not too bad. Right. Need a tool, make a tool. Here we go. If you ever get one of these really, really tight, don't be tempted to chisel it off unless you get a new one first because they're aluminium and it won't last five minutes. Um, not made out of strong stuff. Anyway, there we are. Now, the one the other end was lock nut. These are just lock nuts. That's a lock nut. The one the other side is a lock nut. That's actually threaded into the frame itself. So now I've got to get a socket on that head and get it loose. Right, 27 mil on the end of the axle itself. We're going to get the big guns on this one. This could be completely seized. It's all dry in there. Check that out. All this kind of white powder. I've seen situations where these have, they've welded themselves in to the swing arm, so let's see what happens. Yeah, movement. Excellent, there we go, right. Okay, now at this point, I've done nothing else. I haven't pulled the wheel out, I haven't done anything else at all because the biggest fundamental central part of doing swing arm bearings, which we're doing today, is whether you can get the swing arm out at all. And if you're going to break things trying to get it out, then you need to reorder those things. And you can just stop at this point if you've broken something. Uh, if this collar lock nut or the other lock nut is seized so much that you either break this or you snap the end of the shaft off, and yes, I've seen that too, or this axle should tube. If, you could, if breakage is going to occur, it's better that it occurs where you can still leave it on the bench, walk away and order parts. So that's why I've done it that way. So that's now moving, both lock nuts are off. Now it's a regular, general, ordinary strip, wheel out, uh, suspension off, swing arm out on the bench, and hopefully, it's been a long day so far already, making tools and stuff, but I'll get to use that again, and that's what it's all about. A couple of things, uh, if you ever have priced up a set of these three-quarter drive sockets, a lot of money. You're gonna pay two, 250 pounds for a set, but look how much I use mine, not just for all the big fasteners on the bike. Top yoke center nut, wheel axle nuts, swing arm center nuts. If you're gonna do that kind of work, you can justify it because the alternative is bodging around buying single sockets. And the great thing with three-quarter drive, it's proper heavyweight, proper sturdy, and it will last you a lifetime. And as you've seen, these things, when you get a set of them, from 26 mil up to 48 mil, they're great bearing presses as well. They just they serve two purposes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is now this axle. In the aftermath of the last video, in the comments, a buddy of mine called Volvi. I hope you're watching Volvi. I just want to mention what you said. He indicated that this axle is in the wrong side. The axle's been put through from the right, and it should go through from the left. Now I've done some looking into it and the axle is completely symmetrical. There's nothing biased to one side or the other that stops you reversing the axle and putting it through from the other side. Axle or spindle, whatever you choose to call it. Now I'm going to put it through from this side when I rebuild this because that's the side the factory put it through. So why wouldn't you do it that way? But obviously from everything I can work out, provided you swap not just the axle itself side to side but you have to swap the adjuster blocks over as well because the one the other side or the one that goes on the head of the spindle has got two shoulders to hold the, the spindle axle still and this one hasn't so as long as you swap them over too the axle technically is reversible this bike came to me from a dealer who MOT'd it and did the PDI check to make sure it was safe for me to ride home 200 mile an hour bike and the axle was this way in 
So, and as you saw, it was rusted and corroded and quite probably he didn't actually do that. It was done by someone else. However, I just wanted to make that point. I wanted to pay that homage to my buddy who said he's had a thousand high boosters since just after Noah bought his one. And with all his experience of high boosters, the axle always goes in this way, not the other way. So when I rebuild this later, I'm gonna put the axle in from the factory side. So there we are, it's great. That's why I have YouTube, you learn from your friends. There you go, right. Now that's still on the ground, so we'll get it up a bit. Okay, that should just pop straight out now because I didn't do anything up tight in the last video. So let's pull the axle out. But one of the reasons this chain's going to go in the bin is I found this. I was looking for the compression link to see what it was like, and there's two side by side. They're both obviously that's the factory link, you can see that because they are what they are. But those there are a pair of compression links or split links, call them what you like. But as you can see, they haven't been flared with a proper flaring tool. They've actually been beaten in with a chisel. There's cuts in them that way on, like straight cuts across them. Now I'm quite sure that whoever did that felt that getting a good old flare on the end of that with a chisel was a great way to make it safe. But they will chip and they will break and then effectively that could just come apart. So if you ever get tempted, don't chisel your compression links really. I'm not gonna criticize whoever did that, it's their choice but I'm not gonna ride on that chain. So this chain is definitely going in the bin. It is worn out anyway, so I'm just gonna cut it off, chuck it in the bin, and when I come to do my chain, I'll show you how to flare the chain compression link properly with the tool. Right, that bolt is stuck in the swing arm thread. There's obviously a threaded lug here under the swing arm that holds this, which is the torque arm for the rear brake caliper. And that's just, it moves, it kind of cracked, but it's super tight. So that's just gonna get hot, snap the bolt off. So for the moment, we're just gonna cover that in WD-40. And yeah, other penetrating oils are available. Get all wet in there. And I'll just clip that up to the swing arm while I'm doing this job. Out there. I don't need it off, not for now, but I'm not gonna try and take that off because if I snap the bolt, I've got just yet another pain in the backside job to do, which I don't need. I'll replace the bolt. I just wanna be able to get it out in one go. It's got lots of oil in the mount. There we go. Right. First thing to do is get the dog bones out of the way. Well known, short links, suspension links, Link plates, call them what you like, generally referred to as dog bones because of their shape, and they set the height of the vehicle. This bike has been lowered, so they're the wrong length anyway. I need to put a new set on, but I'm not gonna cut them off. I'll just unbolt them, it's pretty easy. As you can see, the bolt slides out until it conveniently hits the exhaust. And Suzuki have made it really easy to get over. This side of the header pipe system removes, it comes off. That side doesn't, so they put the bolt through from this side. Clever thinking. The headers come from the cylinder head, down under, through an X pipe, uh, and then straight, that one comes straight up. So that header's one piece all the way up. This side is removable. Well, it was, because on this one, as you can see, the clamp here, that's one side of a clamp that would have had a bolt through it, and the other piece is sheared off here. So there's no clamp to clamp this down. So all this bird poo you can see here is what now welds the exhaust on. So someone, probably with a welding rod, like an arc welder, has welded this exhaust on with this stuff, which appears to be poo. So obviously, <laughs> now I want to keep I want to keep this exhaust. It's got a lovely rusted patina on the header pipes. They're not breached or the integrity of the pipes is in no bad way at all. But there's just a lovely 
rusted scale on them all the way down and as a rat rod that's very valuable so underneath here they're all intact there's no there's no corrosion you might put in inverted commas where it's really bad but nevertheless if I have to replace this system if I have to cut that off and then have to replace this in some way then I'm going to get a new shiny steel exhaust which I really don't want I quite like the rusted one it works for what I'm trying to do with the bike so I'm going to try and remove this you'd normally take that off but I can't because the bird poo's holding it on and if I break that off it could well completely annihilate it. I'll probably have to in the end anyway because that <laughs> welding is just I thought mine was bad <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oops. right so I'm going to find another way I think if you take the bottom bolt out which will come out that releases the bottom of them then I can lift the whole swing arm up and I might be able to get the bolt out above there's always a way in there Oh my goodness, one shot was over. Now that's not too bad, it's in a bit of a mess. All the preload is wound off because it was on lower dog bones, it was a shorter rider, she wanted the bike as low as possible, so I think that's just a matter of adjustment. But there's no leakage, nothing like that, there's no pitting on the shaft, on the ram there, so that will be reused. I want all this patina, that's exactly what I want for the project. And this, there it is, one swing arm. Now you can see what a bun fight it is to get out. There's a lot of what you're doing is getting round things that are stuck and difficult to move and solid and corroded and rusted and 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 so that's where your ingenuity comes in I've always had a firm belief that a technician is the guy with the fancy certificates in the wall who can work out dwell angles who can do engineering uh, a mechanic is a straightforward guy who can get round problems adapt and overcome and get things fixed simple now that involved making a little tool I hope you enjoyed that that's very very straightforward as you can see with the axle shaft you just have a lock nut each end once you take that lock nut off it doesn't matter which one comes off first to be quite honest once you get them off then you just unscrew the axle now as you can see the state of it yet again the thread on this end is rusted so that will have to be cleaned up completely and then lubricated before it's put back in at least protected with some anti-seize at the very least so all of that sort of thing, reassembly is a process of thinking ahead to what you've discovered this time and avoid it in the future. There's a few other things to deal with. I'll come to them in the next video. That is it for today. We have got to call it done. It is 10 past three now. I've got to go to work at four o'clock, so I've seriously got to get cleaned up. We're going to call this done. I'm going to just drop that down, unlike I like to do normally and finish these jobs in one video. This is a little bit too long for that. In the next one, we'll pop the bearings in, pop the new seals in, pop it back in the bike, reassemble everything basically, and that will just leave the chain of sprockets to do before that back end is then. All done but the brakes. There we are. Anything else, Ben? Have a terrific Tuesday. Have a fantastic Tuesday. Take it easy, ride safe, we'll update the board. We'll see you next time. That's what they said from day one. It'll happen when you're not looking, never knowing where it might come from. Well, I met my better half one night at the bar. Sitting on my stool